at this point, pull out some rubber. And we're going to cut a 30 inch loop of rubber. And you can go longer than that. Actually, I'm going to go out to 34 inches. That's where I usually end up with these. And so, it's a total of 68 inches long. Now, I'll take some rubber lubricant here. pair of O-rings. in this rubber. Then we will come back and we'll tie another knot across. So we're going to squirt a tiny, tiny little dab of glue, just a tiny drop of it right there. And cinch that knot up. And we're going to snip off the excess. Make sure that's dry. Good. All right, now we're going to squirt some more lubricant. This is a silicon-based lubricant. There's no petroleum products in it, so it won't damage the rubber. And now we can lubricate this rubber motor. Slide the O-rings to the ends. And I'm just going to temporarily load this motor onto the airplane to get an idea of where we are on center of gravity. And center of gravity is right about there. It's probably still a little bit aft, but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to load this rubber motor onto my torque meter. And what we're going to do is we're going to crank in about 300 lines or something like that. Just something small. Enough to take up the slack. In my case, that's about 450 turns. And now we will grab the front O-ring. We're going to load it on the prop shaft. Rear O-ring onto the rear. And now we're going to give this a test run. So this is just going to be enough power to make the airplane have an extended glide more than likely. And we see that it immediately stalls out. All right, so I've slid the wing back yet more. We're gonna try again. And that looks much better. I've got a gradual left-hand turn going. Now I would like to tighten up that left-hand turn a little bit, so I'm gonna move my rudder over one notch And that may be a little too much, we'll see. But now I've got that much rudder offset, just like that. I'm gonna give this one more test. I mean, this is basically just gliding at this point. And that looks about right. 
Now I want to point out, um, I've got the propeller locked with a piece of wood. My center of gravity is actually about 45% toward, so actually in the front half of the wing, just forward of that. So now we've got about 800 turns in here, so we're going to see what the airplane does. And it's actually still stalling a little bit there. All right, I've slid the wing back just a shade more. That's looking a little bit better. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a pen and I'm going to mark that wing location. And I'm going to put a comment that this is for left. And I'm also going to mark my turn location my left turn on there. Now if at any point uh, as I'm setting this up the airplane starts acting like it's going to crank in like this so I launch it and it goes and it starts cranking around and beginning to dive in. I can break one of these little rectangles out of this sheet that has my wing tips and I can and what I will do is I will fit it between the motor stick and this wing mount here at the back of the wing, which will pull this wing out away from the motor stick. And that is the same as twisting the wing this way to hold the wing up so that the airplane doesn't spiral in. Now we're going to switch now to right hand turn. Uh, actually, we're going to give this one more run with a little bit more power just to see what it does. And then we'll go with that. Right, we are now at 0.3 uh, torque on the JN or 0.35 torque on the JNH torque meter, which is more than enough to hit about a. I think that'll get you to about a 30 foot ceiling typically on one of these. So we're just we're still set up for our left hand turn. Have not made any changes. So let's see what happens. Oh yeah, very nice climb. And my four bird. Nope. Now, if, as I was doing that, I had seen that the airplane was just tending to roll over to the left, um, I would, again, like I said, put a shim back here uh, at the rear wing mount. If I had seen that the airplane's starting to dive at any point in all of this, I would take one of these from this sheet, and you stick it, what you would do is pull this tail boom loose, stick it up under there, and then you drop that tail boom notch back down in here. Yeah, come on you. There we go. And it would push, help to push this away from the motor stick. And by doing that, that gives me, pushes this up, which helps the airplane to nose up. Um, my previous one of these requires several of those. This one, for whatever reason, does not. So that for what it's worth. Now let's set this up for a right turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this loose. I'm going to slide it over here enough to get myself a fairly decent amount of rudder offset. I don't know if you can see that much. It's probably not going to be enough. Usually it takes more uh, right rudder than it does left, but we'll see. Um, I'm not going to move the wing yet because I don't know what it's going to look like. So, okay, there we go. Now we get to do some right turn. This airplane is just literally, it's diving straight in. No, um, no happiness at all. So what I'm going to do is in this case, since I want to skew my wing effectively like this to hold that wing up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this wing over from the front. So what I'm doing is I am sliding a shim right here at the front. Go in there, you. Come on. And I actually don't, I don't think that's going to be enough. I'm going to put a second one.
So I've got two of those in there. You can see, if you look closely, you can see it's got the wing pushed apart a little bit there. And that might be enough. We'll see. We have other issues too. This is fun. Our stinger is not holding its nose up at all in the right hand turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop one of these 1 64th inch plywood shims out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this wing loose or tail loose. I'm going to drop it right on there just like that. Now, slip it back in, and so it's shimmed the tail apart there just a little bit. Alright, so let's see what effect that has. Oh, we're not turning now. That's awkward. Alright, since we're not getting enough of a turn go- oh, I see why. I did not put this in the correct station. Let's try that. That might do better. Oh, yeah. Actually stalling just a wee little bit there. Alright, so I wound this up a little tighter just to see if um, that's a low power phenomenon, that, that little bit of stalling. So, here it goes. Yep, I was right. Since the stalling is only happening at low power, um, I have slid the wing back a little bit more just to see if that'll correct it. And indeed, oh, fun. All right, so I noticed the airplane is actually starting to crank in again, so I added another shim at the front of the wing because it looked like it was rolling up over rather than really diving. There we go. Might need to tighten up the turn some though. So I added some more right rudder, so I moved it over another notch just to see if maybe that'll help. And that's looking pretty good. That's looking good. I added one more 164th inch shim under the uh, back of the tail boom just to see if maybe that would make it flat cruise just a little bit more nose high. Oh yeah, look at that. That's perfect. Okay, I took us up to 0.3 inch ounces again just to see what the airplane's going to do with more torque. And it flies wonderfully and gets stuck. <laughs> what I'm doing is I am coming in here and coloring this in with a black Sharpie. Per the Sciali rules, you get a bonus for this. Supposedly it makes your airplane easier to see. I think red would have been a better choice or something like that, but yeah, who am I to, you know. Anyway, just gently do that, and now it's all colored in. I'm going to go ahead and we'll close out with marking that right there is where my right turn is. I'm going to draw an arrow to that. And I'm going to put on here right plus three. That's how many shims I need. And then back here, I'm going to mark my uh, final point that I found for my right turn. And then I'm going to write down here left zero, right plus three. Or plus two. And the reason for that is two shims for our right turn. This has been the build video for the JNH Aerospace 2020 Stinger 
or right stuff science olympiad monoplane or biplane we've showed you the harder one to trim which is the biplane monoplane is considerably easier um, they get very good flight times as you can tell it doesn't take a whole lot of power to get going um, and they climb very strongly at very low torque uh, probably the lowest torque I've seen of any of these. If anything, you would want to actually repitch the propeller to uh, boost the pitch a little bit. Um, and I will show you on camera the way that you would do that is you grab a blade and you twist them up a little bit like that. So, questions, comments on flying and whatnot, put them in the comments section below. I hope to see you at Invitational this season, and happy flying! Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.